rock stars, what comes to mind when you hear the word? I'm sure it involves someone who goes on wild nights, sold out stadiums, and electrifying performances that leave everyone mesmerized. You're not wrong for thinking that though. For many band members, these things are reality. However, some take the wild nights so far that their performances suffer as a result. Behind the scenes of the rock music industry, many legendary musicians have succumbed to their vices which resulted in their infamous moments of chaos or missed opportunities on stage. Let's find out which rock stars took their wild nights too far. Slash Guns N' Roses. It doesn't come as a surprise to many to learn that Guns N' Roses are people who love to drink and party hard. As one of the quintessential rock bands of the late 1980s and early 1990s, their reputation for excess preceded them. Slash, with his signature top hat and mane of curly hair, embodied the rock star image often seen with a cigarette dangling from his lips and a bottle of Jack Daniels in hand. Of course, the band isn't estranged with drunken performances. They've had a lot, but one of the most iconic and memorable is their show in 1991, when Slash struggled to play the hit song Welcome to the Jungle. He seemed too intoxicated to comprehend what he was doing and the notes he was playing. As the song goes, you know where you are? Apparently, Slash doesn't know where he was. Luckily, the event doesn't take away from the fact that Slash is one of the best guitarists to ever step foot on stage. Keith Moon, The Who. If you don't know Keith Moon, there are two words that can encapsulate who he was. Legend and chaos. It's not a secret that he's a legend behind the drums. Even modern drummers that many people look up to view him as their inspiration. Behind the talent he has, he's also one of the most chaotic and unpredictable figures in rock history. He works hard and parties even harder. It's also not a secret how he had a big appetite for drugs and alcohol, so it's pretty unsurprising that he's on the list. But despite being so buzzed, he can still play an hour-long set with electrifying energy. That was until a concert in San Francisco in 1973. That time, Keith was so deep into tranquilizers, which he chased with brandy, that he wasn't able to perform properly. In the middle of their song, Won't Get Fooled Again, Keith started to wind down. He reportedly had to be removed from the stage and given a cold shower. Of course, the band wanted to finish the show, so Keith was brought back to play Magic Bus, only for him to wind down again and even pass out in front of his drum kit. Guitarist Pete Townsend was desperate to finish the show, though, so he asked the crowd if there was anyone who could play drums, which led to a 19-year-old fan, Scott Halpin, joining his favorite band on stage. David Lee Roth, Van Halen Like any other legendary 80s band, Van Halen parties hard. They were one of the most hard-drinking groups then. Frontman David Lee Roth is no different. In 1983, the band was invited to headline Rock Day, a massive music event organized by Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. It was a hard opportunity to pass up because they were offered one and a half million dollars. What could have been a triumphant event for the group turned into a debacle thanks to David Lee Roth's excessive party. The band showed up to the festival in pretty ragged shape since they spent the past three months touring. David Lee Roth was, according to MTV VJ Mark Goodman, drunk and coked up, laughing at every joke he made. So it was clear before they even got on stage that he was in no shape to perform. Once they were on stage, though, David Lee Roth started forgetting the lyrics to their own songs. He was falling off the stage, slurring his words. As expected, their set ended with a backstage altercation. Billy Joe Armstrong, Green. I think everyone already knows the infamous iHeartRadio festival incident involving Billy Joe Armstrong of Green Day. It was September 2012, and the band was performing at the iHeartRadio Music Festival in Las Vegas. As Green Day took the stage, Billy Joe's behavior quickly became the focus of the performance. His years of drinking and substance abuse finally caught up to him on that day. Midway through their set, the frontman stopped singing and launched into a profanity-laden lecture directed at the festival organizers. This was because he saw the sign telling them that they had one minute left. For him, the shortened set time was disrespectful. He smashed his guitar in a blind rage and stormed out the stage with the band. After the event where he was blackout drunk, Billy Joe went straight to rehab. When he recounted the event, he said, I remember tiny things. The next morning I woke up, I asked my wife, Adrian, how bad was it? She said, it's bad. I called my manager. He said, you're getting out of playing, going back to Oakland and going into rehab immediately. Vince Neil, Motley Crue. Anyone who's ever read or watched Motley Crue's memoir, The Dirt, knows that they're no strangers to it, excesses and wild escapades. Motley Crue's lead singer, Vince Neil, drank as if his life depended on it. 
he consumed incredible amounts of alcohol, up until the night he got into a car accident while driving drunk, which led to the passing of his passenger, Hanoi Rock's drummer, Razzle. He checked himself into a rehab facility right then, but he's always struggled with sobriety. One time that really showed his struggle was during a solo show in Tampa, Florida in June of 2006. According to those who were in the show, Neil was already buzzed when he started his set. Like any other person who starts their show drunk, he couldn't remember the words to any of his songs. He stumbled on the stage way too many times. Of course, no crowd would be happy to pay money to witness a show like that, so naturally, they booed him. When Vince Neil heard the boos, he told the crowd to shut up, eventually walking out. The band carried on until Vince Neil reappeared a while later, stumbling on the stage for a few more minutes until his set was over. A few days after what happened, Vince Neil talked about what had happened in an interview. I was pretty buzzed, I tripped, fell off the stage, sometimes it happens. Liam Gallagher always. The younger Gallagher brother, Liam, is known for being hot-headed and erratic. For many outsiders, it seems like he just hated everything around him during the height of their fame. It didn't help Liam that the tensions between him and his brother were continuously rising. In 1997, in the middle of a show in France, a drunk Liam Gallagher climbed on top of everything he could. That wasn't all though, since he was uncontrollable. During that whole show, he also sat on stage, ran around with no idea what he was doing, and even played the drummer's cymbals with his bare hands. He did all this in front of thousands of fans, where many might not have been too keen about it. Scott Stapp, Creed. We're happy that Creed's frontman Scott Stapp is now sober and enjoying it, but back in the day, that wasn't the case. He was known for always arriving at his shows looking like he had just drunk all the alcohol in the world. One show in particular is memorable for so many people for the wrong reasons, unfortunately. It was hailed as one of the worst performances given by a major band that's not from the 80s. In fact, the December 2002 show in Chicago was so bad that a group of fans who watched it filed a lawsuit against the band. According to them, Scott was too wasted to sing, cheating him out of a real show, so they demanded a refund. The court filing said that Scott was so intoxicated and or medicated that he was unable to sing the lyrics of a single Creed song. He also left the stage on several occasions during songs for long periods of time, rolled around on the floor of the stage in apparent pain or distress, and appeared to pass out while on stage during the performance. It's incredible that the band carried on and finished the entire show, just playing extended solos and keeping up appearances if nothing wrong was happening. The band was compelled to apologize in a later statement, but the lawsuit was eventually thrown out. Unfortunately, that was the start of the end for the band. They broke up in 2004, a year after the lawsuit was filed. Wes Scantlin, Puddle and Mud. Well, what kind of list of rock star disasters would you have if you didn't include Puddle and Mud's Wes Scantlin? There are just too many instances of him being too wasted to perform that it might take us a day to go through all of them in detail. But one memorable incident was Puddle and Mud's show in Toledo, Ohio in 2004. After playing four songs for the show, all members of the band except Wes walked off the stage because Wes was too effed to perform. Of course, in true drunken fashion, Wes didn't take the hint from his bandmates. He stayed on stage, and for what seemed like forever, an agonizing 30 minutes, he swore endlessly, staggered around the stage, and insulted the audience. He even dropped his guitar and sang made-up songs. He eventually went backstage after the incident. But what was a big shock to everyone was that what Wes did was illegal. Toledo police arrested Wes on a misdemeanor count of disorderly conduct. He had to pay $150 bond before being released. To explain himself, Wes said in an interview, I just got a little too buzzed to play my guitar and sing at the same time. Whether it's Slash struggling to play through a haze of intoxication or Vince Neil's battle with addiction culminating in tragedy, these stories show just how much addiction to alcohol and substances can affect people even if they were part of the world's most famous band. But despite that, there are also stories of redemption. Some of these events led to members getting help and eventually becoming sober. 